Welcome back to the Alcohol Free RV. Recently, we were in Lapine, Oregon, and there was a forest fire just three miles from where we were staying. Now, where we were staying is kind of open grassland, but it quickly gets into forest. It was bordering Newberry Volcanic Monument, and so it's a very large, very beautiful forest out there. We saw smoke in the afternoon. It was probably about, what, 3 o'clock in the afternoon? Yeah, 2.30, 3 o'clock, something like that. And I was outside putzing around with something, and I recognized that there was a very big cloud of smoke about three miles south of where we were staying. We've dealt with forest fires. You know, we've had a lot of them. There were two very large ones back-to-back -back years in Colorado Springs. So we know what to look for we know the signs of this isn't just you know a small thing this is serious and needs to be taken care of so we figured it would be a good idea for us to sit down and talk to you guys about the things that we we did to you know get through there the things that you need to know about forest fires and a couple of things that you can do to help um, mitigate fire while you're camping so the first thing very first thing know where you are so that if you see a forest fire you can call in and report it now i knew that we were in deschutes county so i called the sheriff's office and just said hey does anybody know about this and they transferred me to their wildfire division like they have an actual division so apparently wildfires are common enough in that area that they have people specifically there to handle it and so I reported what I saw from where I was, you know, my location. And, you know, they told me that they had already had reports of it. They knew about it. Don't feel like, oh, this is big enough. Someone else must have reported it. Right. It could be one of those things that, yeah, they got a report of a smaller fire a little bit away. But now that additional information that you're giving to you know, the authorities could really make the difference of how they target a fire because that the fire that we experienced in the pine, they were able to, you know, completely contain it in a couple hours. Right. Like, and that's the thing. It's the, oh, well, someone else has already reported it. I don't want to inundate them. If you call and the line is busy, then you know that they're, they're on it and you're okay. But don't, don't just feel like, oh, I don't have to report it because that could make the difference between containing it and you know, an out-of-control fire. Right, you don't want to be the person that uh, makes that assumption. Yeah. Because if everybody makes that assumption, it doesn't get reported. So right. go ahead, pick up the, the phone, call the sheriff's office, right. you know, at a minimum, and see if it has been reported. From there, once we knew that it was had been reported, they were taking care of it, we then had to turn to our own safety and make decisions that were right for us right. now this fire was only you know it was really close uh three miles is not very far when you're talking about a forest fire no it the wind can blow in a different direction and three three miles of forest can go down in you know a matter of hours and we instantaneously decided that we were going to start doing what uh, start acting as if we were under what's a level one fire um, evacuations, which is you don't have to go, but start getting ready. Right, there there are, so there's three general levels and they've given them names now rather than just numbers. Right. They literally call it ready, set, go. That is pretty much all you need they to, to know where you are. If you're in that ready state, you should probably start getting your um, getting your stuff together, cleaning up around your site. Right. Um, the the ready stage is at any moment you could be asked to leave, and the go is you leave now. That's that's really what it breaks down to. Now, our area was not in any no. range yet, but the the town of Lapine in a specific neighborhood was in that ready state. Now, I don't think that fire expanded past the ready state, but you know, having that information and knowing where you are and if you're within one of those evacuation zones could make the difference between saving your life, saving your home, yep. you know, save, saving your animals, your kids, 
Um, so just be really aware of, of your location in relation to uh, these, these evacuation zones. Yeah, and your evacuation routes. Like, do, don't rely solely just on GPS to get yourself out of an area. Make sure that you kind of have a general idea of how do I get to a major, like, you know, one or two major thoroughfares so that if, I, if you've got to go and you have to go with little notice, you're not, you know, going, oh, I don't know how to get out of here and you running straight into an area that could be, you know, dangerous for you or can inhibit the rescue workers' ability to do their jobs. Right. There may be road closures that you're not aware of. Mm -hmm. So, like for where we were, the fire was south of us and our intended route, which was scheduled for the next day, was to go south. And... So I, I took a look at the available routes to where we we're going next and found a way that we could get there by going north and around. It would have been a little bit longer, but we had options. Right. We knew that we didn't have to go through the fire to get out. It's important to understand how you're going to evacuate in the case of emergency and so that you do it when you're in a much calmer state because it, if you don't already have that pre-planned, it can, it's terrifying. You're more likely to make a mistake when you're under a ton of stress. So getting that planning done at first notice is going to be a lot better for you in the long run. We just start packing things up and things that, you know, we don't necessarily need aren't going to be a big deal to get out. Like we're not pulling our hoses or, you know, unplugging and packing the whole rig in. We're just, you know, putting away the extraneous objects. Yeah, you we, know. we put these chairs away. Right. <laughs> put know. away, you know, a couple of things there in the house that, you know, needed to go in cabinets so that had we gotten that, you know, word that we needed to, you know, start packing up and thinking about going, we could then focus on, you know, the other stuff. And so we just kind of, you know, break it down so that we don't miss things and we don't, you know, end up hurting our you know our rig while we're leaving because we're panicked you don't want to like just like bounce up and run out because you can make it you can make a problem for yourself but you also don't want to just sit tight and wait until someone says that this area has to be evacuated you, you can make mistakes it's just kind of you know slowly pacing yourself and paying attention to the area now we were fortunate enough that we were in an established rv park when this happened so I presume that in that situation, the, the park would actually go to each site and say, hey, this is the stage that we're in. You're gonna have to plan to get ready to go. If you're out boondocking, you're out in national forest land, there's not gonna be a ranger that's gonna be able to tell you that information. So you've got to take a look at any resources you have available and sometimes that's as little as your own eyes. Right. If you don't have a, a good internet signal, you can't get to Twitter, um, you can't get text messages. Sometimes they'll, they'll send those kind of alerts through every phone in the area. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're not gonna get that. Right. So the, the goal is to, to really try to get yourself as ready ahead of time. Because like Rachel said, getting, getting that stuff done while you're calm rather than while you're in a panic is going to be uh, really a saving grace. I wouldn't necessarily rely on your soul safety on the parks proprietors, their management being the ones telling you, okay, you need to go. In when in doubt, use your best judgment. If you're feeling uncomfortable, if you're, if something, if your intuition is telling you we need to go, then you need to go. I knew that we were you know probably a little bit ahead of what they were asking of us but i knew we were ready and my intuition was telling me that that was something that needed to you know happen and i'm glad we did now the one thing i think we should talk about are what can you do as a um as a as a good camper essentially to help you know to prevent, you know, some like Smokey the Bear. Only you. Can prevent fire, <laughs> forest fires. But, and honestly, it's really important because like this afternoon we were out walking and someone had left, but they didn't, you know, they put out their fire. It wasn't an active fire, but they didn't realize that the coals were still smoldering. Mm -hmm. And so by the, they probably left and there's probably barely anything. They're like, oh, it's good. And then it had flared back up again. Right. And so it's really important, you know, to know 
how to effectively put out a campfire and know whether or not there's any kind, what kind of burn bans are in your area mm -hmm. you're going to be at because it's different in each state. So like we're in Washington right now and there's, there are burn bans in the area, but we're, you know, in, we're near Puget Sound. So they're a lot less stringent. Um, you can use campfires. They just don't want you burning garbage and things like that. Right. But like back in Colorado Springs, there are times where there's literally, you can't use any flame outside. Right. You can't, if you are a smoker, you can't smoke outside. You can't use a propane grill. You, It's a tinderbox. And you need to be hyper aware of what those regulations are because they don't put them in just for, you know, to make your lives difficult. They put them in because the environment needs us to protect it that way. And that fire that we saw this morning or afternoon uh, just in in this campground, and we didn't know if anybody knew about it. It looked to be completely unattended. So, you know, we did what we could. You know, at that time we, we filled up some water bottles and, and put as much water on it as we thought was all right. But I wasn't able to attend to the fire to ensure that it was completely out. Uh, we did report that to the, to the campground to have somebody make sure that it was done right. I don't claim to be a fire prevention specialist, but I did what I felt I was capable of doing to ensure safety right now. Yeah. You know, and, and here's the thing, if you're going to use open flames, make sure that everything's in an established, you know, established camp, fire, uh, fire ring. ring. Don't just, you know, don't think, oh, well, it's not a big deal. I'll just build my fire right here. No, it needs to be and it needs to be in something that's contained mm -hmm. and make sure because it, fires have started for such little little things and yep. just don't ever 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 leave a fire unattended and absolutely make sure that it is cold the fire what the fire you had the coals are cold before you walk away from them yep doesn't matter how late you're out partying whatever they've got to be cold because they can pick up at any time i know that that was a more serious kind of message today. I uh, really appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like uh, this kind of video. Let us know if you want to know anything else, like our experiences with, you know, fire or you know any kind of emergency kind of preparedness stuff. Just let us know, and yeah, we can see, you know, down. what we know. Yeah. Can't guarantee you that we're going <laughs> to know a whole lot, but you know. There's always opportunities to learn, though. Exactly. Um, Again, thanks for watching. Hope you subscribe to our channel. Like us on Instagram. I've been working hard on that Instagram account recently. Yeah. <laughs> Just been kicking butt, taking some awesome photos. Closing is hard. Closing is hard. Closing is hard. You sounded like uh, Christopher Walken there for a minute. <laughs> I need more closing. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> All right. All right, see you guys. Deuces. <laughs> Did you just say deuces? <laughs>